Let's put a little bit of context to this specific property before we dive into all the financials, which let me say, they're pretty good. A lot of people are coming, like my students, people that I know, people that are trying to invest, they're actively coming to me and saying, Rob, there are no good deals on the market. And that might be seemingly true if you're just looking at Redfin and Zillow every single day. You gotta get really creative with how you're finding your Airbnb deals or any real estate deals. No one's gonna just hand you a 50% cash on cash return and say, here you go, pal, go forth and prosper. You have to work for it. If you're not willing to work for it, then you don't deserve it. That's sort of the harsh truth here. So if you're willing to work for it, you got to get creative. This specific deal came across my desk because my business partner and I follow a bunch of Instagram accounts like Cheap Old Houses, A-Frames Daily. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones. Circa Houses. These are Instagram accounts that feature really architecturally beautiful homes that are super, super old. Or they're just super architectural and beautiful, but they might be out in the middle of nowhere. And so a lot of people will look at these houses and say, oh my God, that's a magnificent house. It could be an amazing Airbnb. Ah, but you know what? It's not worth buying because who the heck would ever visit this city or that city. I can understand why people think that because if you're running numbers and you're analyzing and you're looking at spreadsheets and you're looking at AirDNA, a lot of the times it will probably give you that conclusion that that property wouldn't perform well. But I always say that analyzing a property is part art and science. Listen, I love analyzing properties, okay? It's very important. You have to understand the return profile of a property before you can possibly go and invest in it. But then comes the art side of it where you have to start asking yourself questions that platforms like MashVisor and all the rooms and even air DNA, they may not know that some of these cities have a new hospital that's being built or a highway that's getting put in where there's a huge labor shortage in that town. And so all the neighboring towns nearby are busing all their contractors over to the small town. Because they're doing that, all the hotels are completely at capacity. And so are all the Airbnbs. And if someone just came and bought and set up an Airbnb there, they would crush it because they're literally the only available option for those contractors. Obviously, this is a very specific scenario that I'm talking about, but it's one that I actually know because I have a buddy that lives in a small town that was hit really hard by a hurricane. And so all of a sudden, all the people in those towns needed their houses fixed, but there weren't enough contractors. And so all the contractors from the state were coming in and there was just nowhere for them to stay other than the actual house that they were fixing, which is obviously not ideal. So I know that's a little bit of a tangent and I hope you understand my point here is that sometimes you're not really looking for the diamond on Redfin. You're looking for the diamond in the rough on some of these more obscure Instagram accounts. And it's on you to go in and take pro photos and furnish it and market it and give it a little razzle dazzle, make it super desirable in a destination that people from neighboring towns want to be in. Before we move on, today's video is brought to you by this super cool tree. Isn't this like, this is like, it's not every day you see a tree like this and I think that we should stop and appreciate that. So yeah, I think as I kind of evolve as an Airbnb investor, I really do start believing in this collision of art and science when it comes to really analyzing a deal. Again, go analyze your deals, but if it's a 29% versus a 32%, I mean, honestly, when it's that close, I don't think you can really pinpoint exactly what return you're gonna make on an Airbnb. So for me, I think that you really wanna like your Airbnb. You wanna have a visceral reaction to it. You wanna think it's a little cutie croissant. You know what I mean? Like you have to like feel something about an Airbnb because if it makes you feel something, then more than likely it's gonna make the people that are traveling to your place feel something too. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. We'll catch you on the next episode of Rob Bill. <laughs> Stupid. All to say, if you want to learn more about my philosophy of comping out deals, art and science, how to run an Airbnb business, how to start one, how to scale it, consider joining Host Camp because enrollment is open. I'll leave a link down in the description below for you to find out more. Okay, so now that we've talked about the philosophy on this property, this property was located in the middle of Wisconsin. It was super close to Chicago and Milwaukee and Madison. And so for me, even though it was about an hour, hour and a half away from all those cities, I felt that that was close enough to be somewhat of a destination to all those cities. And I ended up being very right about that. <laughs> I mean, we have been very, very, very booked in the five months that we've owned this property. You know, my partner sent me this. I just felt it. You know, I was just like, this house is special. It's a mid-century modern house meets this like kind of chopped down A-frame. It's like, instead of an A, it's like a, a short, a <laughs> just maybe just show the photo here but it was kind of this a frame that was like a cabin but also like mid-century and so i never really seen a house that looked like this and i don't know it just kind of why do i feel like we're about to get murdered <laughs> So this house was really nice. I took a look at the location. I was like, okay, I think we're gonna make this work. And then what I did is I actually went into Airbnb and I, there weren't really any comps. And so this really starts going against my philosophy of looking for the comps, getting into the art and science here. But I said, well, the lack of comps in this instance didn't really bother me because I felt like the location had potential and there's no competition. I am the competition. I could come in with a really nice house and be that destination getaway for all the different cities. So my partner and I went back and forth. He's like, I don't know, there's no comps. And we threw it into AirDNA Rentalizer and it said that it was gonna make 
I think $65,000. I'll show you that when we actually get back into the studio. And just from a, a monetary standpoint, we we're like, okay, there's not really gonna be too much meat left on the bone as far as a return is concerned, but we liked that it was on like 20 acres or something like that. And so the 20 acres, I was like, well, okay, we have this awesome house that's amazing. What if we could throw like little den outdoor A-frames around the property and we could have one, two, three, four other income producing properties on that property. So then it would go from $65,000 a year to like $200,000 a year if we really execute our vision. So after we started mathing that out, we we're like, oh my gosh, like this thing could actually be a cash cow. And so now we're working on how to permit this little tiny A-frame village. Pan over, pan over. And then, um, So now we're looking into and working through the details of actually permitting a tiny A-frame village out in the middle of Wisconsin. Even if that doesn't work though, the property was gonna be enough of a return. I think at that time it was gonna be like a 20% and we're like, okay, meets our minimum just based on the comps that we did. But I was like, something about this property is special. I think it's gonna make even more money. And let me tell you, it did. And as much as I wanna withhold that information now, you probably already know if you saw the thumbnail of this video. So I'm still not gonna say it though because we're gonna hop into the studio and actually get into the nitty gritty here. Okay, so let's talk about some of the nuts and bolts of this deal. Yes, I am sick. Yes, I did take Mucinex PM before hitting... <laughs> it's kicking in. It works. Hang with me, folks. It's gonna be a good ride. Okay, so let's pop the address in here. Obviously, it's gonna be blurred, Kaleeb. And this shows up as a two-bedroom, two-bath at $59,800. However, this is a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath, and we host up to eight people here. So that should change it a little bit. Yep, okay, so $69,800, so effectively $70,000. However, if you look at the rentalizer estimate over here, you can see that the revenue actually goes up over the course of two years. And when we bought this property, the rentalizer estimate actually showed $61,600. So already this deal wasn't necessarily comping out. We looked at all the top properties in the area. Obviously, this is us, so that's not gonna count. And this one was 23,000, 77,000, 43,000, 53,000. So it already wasn't looking good now there were a couple properties by the lake that were performing super 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 well however they were on the lake they had a view of the lake they were on the water you know that already is just a really huge competitive advantage but the one thing that we had with this property as I've mentioned is that it's really nice it's a kind of this pseudo a-frame with a chopped top on it a chopped top a-frame I'm coining that right now so it's just really unique. You know, the inside of it has this cabin feel to it. We added some nice like mid-century colors to it. You know, some of the remodeling done throughout wasn't necessarily to my taste, but for Airbnb, it's perfectly fine. Now, one of the things that I like to do with Rentalizer is go one bedroom up if I feel like my place is super nice for a couple of reasons here. If you look at the listing here, we sleep eight people. So that's pretty much like a four bedroom. Like we can compete with four bedrooms because two people per bedroom, that's eight people. I think we put like a sleeper sofa in one of the loft areas or in the living room. I can't really remember off the top of my head and so while this might be a three bedroom because it can sleep eight people and it's super 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 nice it could probably compete with the four bedroom in my opinion so when you do that you can see that this revenue is actually eighty seven thousand dollars roughly right again if you look at the trajectory here the revenue goes up pretty substantially over the course of two years and when we bought this it said it was actually closer to seventy nine thousand dollars for a four bedroom two and a half bath but for a conservative estimate we'd be looking at seventy thousand dollars as our estimate for this property however remember when we ran this rentalizer, it was actually $61,600. So now I wanna talk about the financials of this property. While I try to hold this together, while I try to stay awake. Ha, 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 stay awake, stay awake. Stupid, stupid. All right, so let's get into the brass tax financials of this property. So we bought it for $540,000. I think it was on the market for over a month for $560,000, so we negotiated a little bit. And then on top of that, we were actually able to negotiate a pretty substantial amount of furniture into the deal. For I think about $6,000, we got a lot of different things. We got couches, we got tables, we got the hot tubs. So many things at a huge discount that we otherwise would have had to have gone and paid full price for, you know, a hot tub. That right there could cost anywhere from five to $10,000 after you factor in the actual hot tub, concrete pad, the electrical work, the all that kind of stuff. Hot tubs can get really expensive. In the grand scheme of things, we effectively got it for nothing. So we put about 10% down on this property, which came out to about $54,000. We paid the seller out of pocket another $6,000 for all the furniture. That puts us at about $60,000. Then we had our closing costs, our travel, and then all the rest of the furnishings that we had to buy for the property. So roughly speaking, and usually I'm more dialed in admittedly, but I'm not the one that runs the books on this property. My partner does it. But I've talked him about it and we spent about eighty thousand dollars all in to get this property up and running so that's all the furniture that's the deep clean the travel the plane tickets the u-haul the truck 
bike rental, closing costs, commission, legal work, anything else you can think of. So about $80,000 all in investment on this property. So now I wanna run you through our monthly expenses here. So here are the different utilities and kind of things in that area. So we'll start with propane. Damn it, you're my boy. We do about three fills a year. Each fill is about $1,000, so that's $3,000 a year. Let's break this into a, a monthly just to make it nice and crispy, a nice crispy boy. Okay, so about $250 a month on propane. And then energy electric costs about $250 a month too. Obviously this fluctuates, but this is an average of course. Our water actually costs us nothing because we're on a well, so that's a nice upside. We don't have internet because there's no internet at this property. What about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? So no internet expenses. Our hot tub maintenance is actually included with our cleaning, so we don't have to pay anything additional there. Each clean on this property comes out to about $185 per clean. And then we have miscellaneous supplies like toilet paper, shampoo, paper towels, all that kind of stuff. That comes out to about $50 a month, but I'm just gonna pad this a bit for the sake of being thorough and say we spend about $100 on supplies. And then we have our pest control, which I think is $120 a quarter. So let's just do that really fast. It's about $40 a month. And then we have some other miscellaneous expenses like lawn care or snow removal. And this is all very seasonal, so we don't spend a lot of money. I mean, it's really just like portions of the year where we pay for this stuff. So when you average all of that out, it comes out to about roughly $40. And then the big one here is our mortgage, which comes out to $3,093.58. So when you add all of that up, roughly speaking, our monthly expenses for this property come out to I said that like I was gonna say the number as if I was prepared, but I haven't actually added this up, so give me one second. $3,773.58 is what we spend every single month to run this property. So that means that every year it costs us $45,282.96 to run this property. So right there, if our revenue would have been that original $61,000 figure, that means that our profit on this property would have been close to $15,000, $16,000, which honestly isn't that bad, but also not particularly ideal. So now I wanna talk about how much money we've actually made with this property. Note to self, don't take Mucinix PM when you're gonna record a YouTube video. I'm tired. I'm feeling it. Okay, so actually I was wrong. We bought this property at the beginning of August and we didn't host our first guest until August 19th. And that's really towards the end of the month there. Well, well let's see, so that would be August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Math is hard. Eight. It's been about eight months, and in those eight months, we have grossed $61,989. $61,989 divided by roughly eight. That means every single month we are grossing $7,748. Now, if we extrapolate that data and multiply it times 12, then we're looking at a gross of $92,983. Now, a lot of people at home about this time are usually like, <laughs> they're getting furious. They're like, Rob, you can't extrapolate data like that. That's so dumb. You have to look at the seasonal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling it. Okay, so as far as the actual extrapolation here, there are a couple of things to talk about. We actually have not hit the peak season for this area of Wisconsin. I actually wanna show you this really fast. So actually, if you look at the data here, October, well really September, October, November, and December, were actually supposed to be the worst months of the year. Like, you, you can see it's all blue right here. These months, we freaking crushed it. I mean, December 2021 is effectively all blue here. Let me show you what we grossed. December 2021 to December 20. 21. In December 2021, we grossed ten thousand two hundred and forty-two dollars and twenty-three cents. Now I know that twenty-three cents may seem like not a big deal. You throw that in the bank account. You let that compound over thirty years. You know what you got in thirty years? Maybe you got a stew and maybe about. 42 cents. <laughs> Anyways, uh, same thing here if you look at November. Uh, let's see, November also pretty dang slow. Let's see what we grossed in November. $8,272.16. Let's see, oh, October. Okay, sorry, I don't, I don't, I'm just, honestly, I'm curious because I don't really dive into this property as much as I should. I've been holding off from talking about it on the channel, honestly, for a long time because I don't run the books for this property and I haven't wanted to like do the math, but here we are. Okay, so October, also supposed to be a really, really low month. $10,521.50. $10,000. $1,521.50. <laughs> Guys, when that music mix hits, it hits. <laughs> so now with all of that said, now let's look at our seasonality calendar here. January starts to heat up. February is great. March not gonna be the greatest month for us. I mean, I'm sure we'll still pull in about seven, eight thousand dollars but April, May, June, July, August, we haven't even hit the busy season for this part of Wisconsin yet. So I feel pretty comfortable extrapolating it, but on top,
top of that, I actually think we're gonna make more than this $92,983 figure. Not necessarily by a long shot, but I think we will crack $100,000. So now what I wanna do is just quickly calculate a little bit more of an accurate profit per month because we do have cleaning fees that we have to take into account here. All of these gross revenue numbers that I've given you do include cleaning fees. So we have to subtract those from this revenue and that will give us a little bit more of an accurate profit here. So what I wanna do is average out how many cleanings we're doing per month. So on average, every single month, we have 6.14 cleans. We're just gonna round this down to six just to keep things simple. So every single month, we can expect to have six cleans which come out to $185 a piece times six comes out to $1,110. That is gonna be our cleaning fee every single month. We'll multiply that times 12. That's gonna be $13,320 every single year for cleaning. So when you add the $13,320 to our overall expense to run the property, which is our mortgage and our bills and everything, that figure was $45,282.56. That comes out to a grand total of $58,602.96. So with cleaning fees and our bills and every single expense that you can account for, we're roughly looking at $58,602.96. That is what it costs to operate this Airbnb. Now, earlier when I extrapolated the data based on past revenue that we made, I said that we were gonna make $92,984.11 this year. So that's our overall gross revenue. And then we're gonna subtract our $58,602.96. And our overall profit for this property is going to be $34,381.15. Just pretty, uh, you know, pretty good, pretty good. Now I'm gonna give you one more profit scenario here, but before I do, I wanna go ahead and just run the cash on cash. So if I said we're gonna make $34,381, Caleb just popped that right there. We're gonna divide that by our $80,000 startup cost. And that means that our cash on cash return for this property is 42.97%. So we'll call it 43%, meaning that we'll make our investment back on this property in two to three years, which is just mm, chef's kiss. It is just, uh, do you say chef's kiss or do you just do the chef's kiss? Doesn't matter when you're on Misa next. Okay, so anyways, like I said, I think we're gonna gross $100,000 on this property. Honestly, I think it'll probably be closer to like 105, 110, but just to go, you know, like not too pie in the sky, but what realistic is $100,000. Let's subtract our $58,602.96 figure from that. That means our profit on this would be $41,397.04. Divide that by our $80,000 startup cost. And we are looking at a 51.74% return. So effectively a 52% return. We will make our money back on this investment in two years. If we gross $100,000 on this property, which spoiler alert, we totally are, I'm calling it. I'll do an update on this in a few months to check in. I mean, maybe we won't, but like, I'd be pretty bummed. Something catastrophic would have to happen like a global pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't wanna, yeah, never say never. Like things can always happen, but for right now I'm feeling pretty hopeful. And obviously just for fun here, let's say that we do gross $100,000 and let's remove our expenses here, $58,602.96. That my friends is gonna be divided by $7.50, 5,000, 519.6 Chipotle burritos. That's how many burritos I'm gonna be able to buy with the profit of this property. 5,519.6 Chipotle burritos is what I net every single year on this chop top A-frame. Now, I'll be totally honest with you. I am not sure how much of this made sense because I don't actually remember the last 20 minutes of talking. So I'm gonna go to sleep. This is a pretty good investment. At the end of the day, that's what I wanna get at, is that this was a really great investment. We should make our money back in two to three years. I'm really excited for it. I love this property. It ended up working out much nicer than we had hoped for. And if you wanna learn how to do this, if you wanna learn how to run the numbers and run an Airbnb business and start from the ground up, if you wanna learn more, you can go to hostcamp.com or hit the link in the description. Again, thanks to today's sponsor here for sponsoring us. I actually, I don't know. I don't know. If they didn't sponsor us, I'm gonna shout them out anyways because they're cool. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep. It's a uh, 108. I uh, shouldn't have done this. My voice is gonna be gone tomorrow. And thank you for your support. Always. You're the best. You're the best. Hold up. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down.